my first impression was, oh no, this is, this is great, but I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, so uh, it was very exciting because Isabel has become a friend. So I think I know her, but when you watch her on set, she's a director. Like, and at the same time, she has any moment for the actor. Like if you say Isabel, she stops, she goes, and she's so sweet and kind with the actors that um, you always feel relaxed. Like when I hear action, it's like, the, I, I feel like sometimes I'm performing for Isabel. It's such a weird thing. And I, I you know, I, before I said this, I never thought of this, but maybe the director you work with is very important because to be watched by someone you admire makes you try and do a good job, maybe. I don't know, I never thought about it before. Uh, my biggest challenge was to uh, respect her and not put me in her. Because like I as a person will apologize more or I'm always like, are you okay? She's not like that. And I, I wanted to enjoy doing what she does. And, and that's hard, that was hard for me. Um, so when the first day he arrived, we had a rehearsal and I was very nervous because when you are working with an actor that you love, you don't know how they work. So I was like, what if, what if he works in a way that I, I'm not like that, you know? So when we met at the table, um, we started reading the script. I was very shy and I kept thinking, oh my God, I'm such a bad actress. He's probably thinking, why did they hire this? Like literally I was like, and then at one point he got a phone call from Rome, from a place in Ostia that had his boat. And I know, because I grew up in Rome, I know exactly the place where his boat was. So I kept hearing this name in Ostia. And when he put the phone down, I said, you have a boat in Ostia? And then I started talking about certain names of streets and he was like, what? And we bonded over this. And I swear after that, the acting was easy. It just took one moment of commonness, you know? Yes, it was my first time in Benidorm. Um, what surprised me the most was in this landscape of beach with the bar, the loud music, the bikinis, the beer. There was like a little library on the beach. And I would sit and have my coffee and it was like they didn't care. If you wanted to read, that's fine while someone else was dancing and it was like everyone could do what they want. So in the end, I felt very relaxed there. Like I kind of liked it. Oh my God. So the day Cadman Machi arrived, I was so excited because I've seen her work and I thought, oh, she's not gonna know who I am. Like it's Carmen Machi. When Carmen was on set, the whole of Benidorm was like, show up. And I was like, Carmen, who are you? Like, what is this? And she's like, Sarita, it's my turn. I was like, oh my God. So, um, and you know Carmen, she's so funny. And just being able to go to dinner with her and hear stories about theater, so happy. And then um, Anna Torrent, who, I also knew her work and I was like, we're so lucky to have her doing this role and Pedro Casablanca, like I was, I was so happy with them. No, I love Spanish cinema and, um, and I knew their work. So yeah, I think they were shocked that I knew. Very interesting question. Um, so like a lot of people, you grow up with Almodovar's cinema and when you live in a different country you look at it like what is this world of color and like 
women who do what they want and they speak loud and it's so beautiful. I was like, who is this guy? So all my life, obviously, Almodovar. So when I heard he was producing this, I don't know, it felt very special. And the thing is, Isabel to me is so special. So I was like, how can these two people be looking at anything I do? So it was like, you know, when you're a kid, you want to work with someone and then you ended up working and you feel like you can't believe they're watching you. Like, who am I? That's how I felt. Um, and I met Pedro in New York. I went to see the premiere of Julieta and I was late to the cinema. So I was standing against the wall and he was speaking. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, please, I hope to not make any noise. I was just like this. And he was speaking and then he finished. And then he walked and he, I was just, I kept my eyes down. I thought, oh God. and he walked by me and he just went, hola Sarita. <laughs> what? How, what? How would you know my name? I still don't know how he knows my name, but I was, I was so <laughs> excited. So, you know, Almodovar is, is, is big. And uh, so it, it's a pleasure to have him, you know, watching this. And Agustin is amazing and has been around helping. And Esther, I love, I love Spanish cinema because it's wild. Amazing. So, hello movies. Um, please come and see Nieva in Benidorm. Isabel Cochette made this movie and it's a strong, uh, crazy movie and I, I don't know what you're gonna think but you should see it. Well I was very intrigued by it. Um, I um... I've never really read anything like it, actually. But I thought, that, you know, I couldn't quite work out um, whether it was a thriller or a love story. Uh, and then I realised, actually, that it's neither and it's both. Because <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's... Uh, I just love the idea of it being a story about a man who'd shut himself down, in a sense, made himself so um, uh, lacking in expectations about anything else happening to him in his life that he'd almost disappeared. And due to circumstances, he finds himself in a situation which becomes a revelation to him on, on many levels. Uh, and um, that's what I liked about it. It's a classic, um, you know, fish out of water uh, story also about somebody who almost decided to make themselves go to sleep and they didn't know they were going to be woken up. And that's what happens in this film. It's a man, a, a man who doesn't really have much self, um, doesn't have much of an ego, um, but, uh, and it's, it finds himself flowering. You know, he turned the light off in him down to such a degree inside himself that he, it was barely on. And this is a, this, these circumstances just turn it into a flame, and that's what happens. That's what I loved about it. You know? And in a sense, the the the, the thriller side uh, is really just because it becomes not a thriller, and so it's a kind of a, a vehicle for this to happen. You know, these extraordinary things to to rattling, to rattles, the rattle this man that uh, has never really. Well, it's extraordinary. The whole thing is extraordinary to him. Yeah, well, yes, he, he, yes, indeed, he gets to he gets to realise that the limitations of his life, a lot of them, have been made by himself, um, and that um, I mean, same with a lot, most we all do that. I think what is expected of us, and, and because we go along and we, we we somehow inadvertently or sometimes on purpose make decisions about our lives, but th th this this is where these 
the decisions about himself are not he can't make decisions about himself because he's too busy pursuing something that has got out of his control you know i think usually everything he's got used to being in control now this is what he this is what his life is about in manchester this eating his apples drinking his tea taking his photograph getting on his bus this quotidian world this rhythm this kind of metronomic rhythm he's found himself in it's lack of expectation for anything to change just the weather the thing that changes is the weather so it is it's this this huge meteorological thing that surrounds the world which you know we all to a certain degree are the victims of he had somehow uh has worked it out you know he's got a he's a meteorologist and he knows what it happens but it, he knows about this huge vast thing but he doesn't know what's going on in himself you know so you have the weather the actual weather and then you have the weather in himself that it's the, the, this misty day this this foggy day that his life has become there's clouds appearing uh they part and the sun comes out and then it storms and then so he he's actually becoming he's starting to live you know, he's starting to live for the first time for a long time, if, 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 if not for the first time ever, really. She, well, it was excellent because um, we got on, it's the first time we met, um, she flew, she sent me the script and then she flew out, which I was deeply flattered to see me in Glasgow, I was filming. And we got on straight away and the questions I had about the film and the thoughts I had about the character, she answered in such a way that I thought she was going to say, well, that's the way. And I, I, a couple of things I said, well, you, you know, we'll make it work. It'll work, you know. Okay, you don't like that, we'll change it. So it was so, I felt such confidence on first meeting her that I did a thing I've never did. Well, after we'd got met, met her, I, I went back and I said, I said to her, well, I'm not going to, I'll have to think about it. And then I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm walking back to where my apartment was, which is only five minutes away, I was in Glasgow. I decided I was going to call her. I said to my wife, this is silly. I've just met this excellent, you know, incredibly respected director and I'm keeping her waiting. So I phoned her and said, I'd like to do it. And the next thing I know, there we were in Benidorm doing it. So, uh, and she, she's really, you know, I've worked with writer directors before, but I've never worked with a writer director camera person. She shoots the whole thing as well as directing and as well as writing, obviously. So, and given all that, given all of it's all, she has all of that power. You don't feel like you're anything other than in a, in a uh, collaboration with her. She makes you it feel like a collaboration. She not, she doesn't. It's almost like she doesn't know what's going to happen. Although she's very, very um, organised about how it looks and that, she allows it. There's a relax, a relaxed, creative spirit in her that makes this just become what it is it is what it is on that at that moment you know well i'm, I'm very very pleased to hear that she she got the check that i sent her to say all them things that's very pleased that she received the money um no it was uh, no she she it was no i exactly i exactly agree with her about her you know that about her she you know as soon as we met you know because i knew we were going to have to go on this and we both obviously knew we were going to have to go on this journey together um i i immediately liked her she, she's very open very um uh accessible charming person and 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 fun and and um you know uh i, mean, I think we both recognized that we uh, immediately we were open with each other that we you know we weren't sure how it was going to go what was you know Sarita had worked with Isabel so she was able to say tell me what fun she'd had working with so that was great and I, I sort of knew that anyway that it was going to be because of what I sort of got from but the three of us together the, you know it was it was excellent we we didn't we didn't really talk a lot about this aspect or that aspect of the character we both constantly acknowledged with each other our vulnerability and our sensibility about not sh sh being sure which way it was going to go when we did it so we were very open and honest with each other and that's that natural she's a very naturally uh, open and kind person and also 
we both done our work. She very dedicated. She really, I could tell that she really worked on the character. So it was great. It was like we'd been ourselves, just in between shots. But then, obviously, our characters are very different. So she'd become this other person, and I'd become this other person. Uh, and then we didn't really have any of these sort of in-depth, slightly waste of time conversations about motivation because we we knew that we were when we were playing the characters they were sort of as far as we could tell telling the story and that and our openness and our vulnerability and isabel's sort of uh, open-mindedness was allowing this to happen it's quite unusual for that you weren't being forced into an in a situation when we do this do that it was like a a natural kind of um, growing of this thing, you know. It was it was a really great. I really really like working with it. A huge, a huge. Oh, uh, hello, movies. Um, I think you should go and see it. Snows in Benador because it's. Well, I've been told it's very good, and uh, it might make you laugh, and it might make you cry, it might make you sick, but hopefully the two before that. So no, I I, I think you might like it. Hopefully. Who knows? Who knows?